please take the roll, Mary. Okay, Bellinger. Here. Bitters. Here. Oren. Here. Amaral. Excused. Excused. Yep. Donahue. Here. Drawn. Excused. Heidemann. Here. Herman. Here. Rachel. Excused. Jose. Excused. Lewandowski. Here. Rob. Excused. Schneider. Excused. Thiel. Here. Chester. Excused. Wolf. Here. Yes. Nine oh. present. There is a quorum. Okay. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion. Chairman? Yes. Question. Is, is this being uh, presented on TV? There's somebody back there. Yes. Okay, so for, so the people that aren't here will be able to write right. the presentation yeah. later. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Um, I'll entertain a, a motion to approve the minutes of the December 12th meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Uh, public forum, is there anyone who would like to speak to the Committee of the Whole this evening on the items that are on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll go down to item one, or two one, Sheboygan Firefighters Union comments on the future fire department alternatives. Hi, uh, Cal Hughes, you may remember me from uh, previous presentations. Uh, and this is uh, Joel Johnsrud, who's also a firefighter at the Sheboygan Fire Department at Station 5, uh, both of us. Uh, last week I wasn't able to attend, but I know that uh, Chase was here two weeks ago, I'm sorry, uh, that uh, Chase was here and you had asked him uh, to give some sort of feedback and direction on the Chief's plan. Uh, that was my understanding. Is that about correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, we did meet with the chief. We had a good meeting. Uh, we looked at his proposal. Uh, we looked at his plan, and uh, we uh, really, when, if you remember back to when uh, we made our presentation, uh, we had stated that we had immediate goals and that we had uh, future plans. Our immediate goals were more uh, along the lines, like we had said, uh, no more two-person stations uh, and uh, getting the battalion chiefs back on 24s. Uh, the chief's plan is pretty short term uh, and it meets those criteria so we really didn't have uh, much difference in the in the short term uh, we liked the plan we did wish that there were a, a couple of small changes uh, maybe the battalion chiefs coming back on the 24s at a, a quicker basis i think they understand that uh, you guys <coughs> understand that because we're telling you again uh, but i like we had said back in july uh, this didn't happen. We didn't get to the staffing level overnight. It's not going to correct itself overnight. Uh, so a little bit of patience by us might, might help, but we also had some ideas uh, that we were able to share with the chief uh, that would uh, decrease the workload in the front office, increase the workload <coughs> on our end. Uh, those discussions were, I won't speak out of school and speak for the chief, but those discuss discussions were fruitful. Uh, we don't have any agreements. It's only been eight days since the last time uh, anybody was here. Uh, we don't have any agreements, anything solid, uh, but we did have good discussion. So that being said, uh, we like the plan. We like the plan overall, and uh, we can support it in at least its principal phase at this point in time. Uh, we would like to work with him more in the future on uh, shoring it up and maybe uh, making some alterations to it, but uh, in its concept, it's, it seems to be a good plan. Is that about right? Right. All right. Uh, that being said, uh, I don't think I really have, we didn't, again, short timetable, we didn't really make a presentation or do anything fancy for you this time, uh, but we would be willing to entertain any questions you might have. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, last time I spoke with Chase, um, and I had him involved at, at the very beginning when I presented this idea of a study. Yes, I had the fire chief invite. In fact, I spoke with you yes, and yep. Chase at the same yep. time. Um, he um, 
and you were in favor of the study as long as there was no uh, predetermined outcome on, on the study. Right. And, and as long as it was a completely independent bias study and there was no predetermined outcome by me or anybody else on the council, right. uh, whether it would be to uh, reduce the number of personnel or increase or reduce the number of fire stations or increase, I mean, there, there was, that was the conditions that were set by you and by Chase. And I, I think um, in, in my intention, that's, you know, I don't have any preconceived um, outcome for this study that, you know, we hopefully we will embark on. I, um, I'm completely neutral. I'm a supporter of the fire department, but I think we need something that's more long-term than the 2020 plan that's presented. And um, I think we need something that's a little more comprehensive and not in narrow a scope is, is what has been presented too. So um, I just wanted to confirm that you guys were still in favor of- I would of say that nothing from that conversation has changed. Okay. Great, thank you. Any other questions? See none. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. We're going to go down to three one. Uh, RC number two sixty five sixteen seventeen by Public Protection and Safety. Your committee to whom is referred resolution number. Uh, 129 1670 by Alderman Theo authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for professional services related to the performances of performance of an operational and department structure study for the, the Sheboygan Fire Department presentation by Steve Knight of Fitch and Associates. Steve. Well, my uh my IT help has <laughs> stepped out. So I'll do a brief introduction <laughs> while I uh, pause. But thank you very much for, for having me. Uh, I'll give you a little background uh, on myself. I retired uh, as a third generation firefighter as an assistant chief uh, from St. Petersburg Fire and Rescue uh, down in Florida. Uh, I started as a firefighter paramedic, worked my way up through the ranks, I served over operations, safety and training, and EMS for, for different portions of time uh, and I also worked with the fire accreditation group for about 10 years as a peer team leader peer assessor and ultimately as uh, part of their consulting arm that does uh, deployment uh, facilitation and strategic planning uh, after I retired I worked for the International City County Managers Association for uh, about a year and a half or two years uh, in their program before I had an opportunity to move over and join Fitch and Associates. So that's a little bit uh, about my career. Um, academically, I have a PhD from the University of South Florida. I have a master's degree in public administration and then my bachelor's degree is in uh, fire and safety engineering. So uh, that's a little bit about myself uh, and our team or our firm, Fitch and Associates has been around for 30 years in the public safety arena. Uh, they had their origins on the EMS side many, many years ago, and we've certainly branched out uh, for fire and EMS, uh, police uh, and uh, billing, ambulance billing, and other things like that. So we have a pretty robust uh, program with Fitch and Associates. So um, I will just go ahead and, and proceed <laughs> without my neat PowerPoint. So um, what I can tell you about our study then uh, is, is we like to uh, describe ourselves as a high engagement consultancy firm. So we understand that when there's multiple stakeholders, uh, as a parent with your union involvement between the city and the fire department and all the community stakeholders, uh, we spend considerable time making sure that we, we make the rounds and do the face time to make sure that we do structured interviews and understand what the real dynamics are in the community. And we work hard also to make sure that we identify and accurately capture what the community expectations for service are. And that's, that's a foundational piece for what we do. Uh, as as uh, Alderman mentioned, we are an objective, unbiased firm. And because of that, we use a very risk-based approach to how we design studies. So uh, each community is unique. There's not a one-size-fits-all uh, you, you want it back? Okay, excuse me. Okay. 
excuse me. So we start at the risk and make sure that we design a deployment strategy and a staffing model for your department that meets the unique expectations that your community has, as well as the unique risks that your community has. And when I said one size doesn't fit all, it's because as you go from community to community, expectations for service can vary considerably where you may have less affluent communities that invest very heavily in their public safety and you may have very affluent communities that that invest uh, less in their public safety uh, you know some of the foundational pieces like uh, your structures the type of structures whether or not there's any kind of fire protection in place uh, your capability uh, from your road network and infrastructure. There's a lot of pieces that make each community unique and we make sure that we, we track through all those uh, and, and make sure that we design the system that's appropriate for you. So that's our general approach. Uh, as far as the deliverables, we'll look, at, we'll look at the full scope of the organization. We'll start with the risk and back up through deployment and then we'll get back to the rest of the the organization to make sure that all the support pieces are there and in place for you to be successful. But a big piece of our, our dialogue that we'll have, especially with the policy group, is to make sure that we have properly captured and articulate what the community expectations are so that we build the system that's designed to meet the expectations of, of the community. And in that, we'll give you some broad frameworks to look at uh, as the scope requested to look at some foundational recommendations that are out there like 1710 iso uh, the fire accreditation model maybe what the ambulance service looks like but we'll, we'll balance all those competing interests so that you can establish policy for where you want your service level to be uh, appropriately on the front side and then we can we can build the system to meet that um, as far as the deliverables i started to say when we say we're a high engagement firm, and it's, it's clear just from that brief introduction from the union, uh, our style will meet very well with that because we like to run it um, purely objective and highly transparent. That's our process. So once we do, it's very data driven. Once we get the data report back, that'll be one of the deliverables and actually the first deliverable. And then the department will have an opportunity to review the data report because the data is what we're going to base decisions off of. So we need to make sure that the department and, and us and the city have all agreed that the data is, passes a common sense test, it's accurately reflecting the performance, and then once we're all in agreement that the data is accurate to use, then we'll use that to build our decision models from there. The second deliverable will be similar to that, and that's a GIS report. So we'll look at, we'll use your data use that in a GIS format and look at all your station placements, uh, things like that, and, and in relation to how your calls are distributed as well as in relation to how your risk is distributed across the community. And we'll compare and contrast the different station areas to make sure that the desired service levels are, are commensurate across the community, and if they're not commensurate, then uh, we'll have a discussion and a dialogue about why they aren't and, and what strategies or alternatives there are uh, to move that pendulum one way or the other. Uh, so once we get the data report, the GIS report, uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll move forward once those two pieces have been reviewed and uh, kind of agreed upon, if you will, uh, then we'll move forward and actually wrap up the overall comprehensive study. Uh, your RFP really broke it out into two phases. So uh, the first phase is really more of the operational piece. Uh, and the second phase is more about function, uh, looking at your structure and the organization, the administrative capacity, et cetera. Uh, but a big component of that is the ambulance billing and the sustainability and viability of the ambulance program. So we'll make sure that we evaluate that uh, very, very thoroughly and give you the pros and cons. Uh, of any alternatives to the status quo and make sure that the revenue streams, the service delivery, and the clinical uh, capabilities and delivery model all match. So it's a, it's a broad scope process uh, for how we, how we like to deliver the reports. And again, it's highly engaged and highly transparent. Uh, so we'll make sure that we, we're in continuous communication and make sure that, that we, we get this moving forward. I don't mean to, David, do you have his...
our fingers crossed. That's all right. That's okay. We're good. So one of the elements I just wanted, uh, you know, if this came up and, and worked, and it was in our proposal for your review, but one of the elements that we have found to be highly successful to drive the policy discussion in discourse about where your service levels are is we use a marginal utility model uh, really from the economic world, if you will, uh, that looks at all your station placements and, and we can articulate a cost and value and return on investment from all the different uh, resources in their place in the station placements. So that if you had to choose anything other than the status quo or had to make any adjustments, there's a, there's a, a very easy way to articulate how and where to invest your dollars or reallocate resources to make sure that you get the the desired outcome in the service level that, that you're going to design. So that's the overall um, approach. And uh, I don't want to neglect the other team members, so I'll briefly go through over that. You had my introduction. Uh, one of the other members that I'll bring on this, uh, on the project would be uh, Dr. Bruce Moeller. And he is a, uh, he actually started uh, as a police officer in Naperville, but he ended up as a fire chief of a large county system down in Florida, then uh, fire chief of a city, uh, not too similar size as Sheboygan, and then uh, eventually turned into, uh, he served for about five, six years as city manager, and then moved on to assistant county manager over public safety. So as you can see, our team has not only the operational street uh, uh, background and experience, but we also bring the, the rest of the equation with our team. Uh, to help uh, communities and our clients make sure that they, they land where they need to land, taking in all the competing interests uh, between the political environment, economic environment, fiscal constraints, et cetera, to make sure that we can have implementable solutions, which is a, something that we pride ourselves on. It, it would be easy to write a world-class fire department report, hand it off, say, this is what you should do. Uh, but it's not implementable, it lands on the shelf and collects dust, and, and that we don't want that. So we work very hard uh, with our clients to make sure that we find the right balance uh, between the community's willingness to assume risk and the either desire or capability to fund uh, protective services. So somewhere in that balance is the, is the policy decision of how and where to, to set your service levels. So uh, another member on our team would be Chief B.J. Jungman. He's actually a chief of a, of a community, uh, Burnsville, Minnesota, uh, and he'll come over and, and assist us with that as well. Our data analysts, uh, Dr. Gong Wong and Dr. Teresa Johnson, will both be uh, working on our quantitative uh, analytics. And uh, our financial piece comes from Diane Wright, and she uh, retired out of Miami-Dade Fire Rescue uh, as their budget director. Uh, and then all of our GIS is done by a gentleman named Brian McGrath. And all of our consultants uh, work for us exclusively, so we don't have any subcontractors or, or anything else. So that's kind of the, the overall platform. I'm sorry our technology uh, tripped us up a little bit, but I'll be happy to answer questions or however format you want. Any questions from the Alderman Bellinger? Thank you, Chairman. Um, Steve, I talked to you a couple weeks ago um, after I got the um, recommendation from the people, city administrator and the people that uh, uh, picked your firm as one of the firm that we would like to go with, uh, should we move ahead with this? My question to you at that time was, there's a phase one and there's a phase two. Can they both be implemented consecutively or does it have to be, um, you know, one after the other, or can it, you know, can it be done consecutively? Can we meet the six-month time frame, or originally you have a 12-month time frame on there if we were to do it, you know, one at a time? So, sure. So, in the proposal, the way we read it, we, as our discussion, we thought it was a, a consecutive request on the city standpoint. But looking at the topics, it would it would more naturally flow as a single project. And yes, it, uh, the phase two would have been four months and the, and the phase one would have been six months. So we can integrate the two and, and complete it in the six month time frame. So concurrently, that was the yes, word sir. I was searching for. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, I just have a couple of real quick questions. Sure. Um, first off, I think uh, f protect, fire protection, police protection is very important to us. Um, I've always said that the police protect us from others and the fire department protects us, protects us from ourselves. Um, having said that, um, it sounds like your company has a, a huge wealth of knowledge, some very knowledgeable people with doctorates and, and so on. Uh, the question that I have, having said that, is with the other information that we've received, it really goes against the, I'm not going to say the acronym correctly, but uh, the NR, there's the regulations that you guys have through the fire department. Okay. So are you guys going to be using the same platform? as far as the, the rules and regulations to follow with recommendations, then how would that play into the wealth of knowledge that you have with everybody else that's in your team compared to everybody, you know, with the information that we've received already? If we're going against the same rules and regulations, how does your team play into that? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, it's a good question. So uh, there's actually several layers to that, so I'll, try, I'll attempt to, to address it. Uh, if I understood correctly, you're probably referring to NFPA? Yes, please. Okay, so just make sure I'm on, on track. So as far as the NFPA recommendations, they're consensus standards. So in every report, we do a gap analysis between what I'd say your status quo, whatever your current level of performance is, and then do a gap analysis too. If you fully implemented 1710, which is their, their operational uh, recommendation, then we can, we'll both uh, provide what it would take to meet that, which many times means more stations or more resources from the status quo. I don't know where you're at today, but that's generally how it goes. So we'll map that out, we'll cost it out, and gives you the pros and cons of how to get there. Um, and then when it comes to our wealth of knowledge, that's where the rest of the story comes in. If, if 1710 is the desired service level, then we'll design a system to meet 1710 at the desired service level. If there are, are any competing demands or constraints where that's not, uh, it's not either desired or that may be a long-term plan but you can't implement it immediately, then we'll march out where do we go from, from merging from your status quo and have a continuous improvement plan. So that's really the avenue that we go and we take all the competing components uh, and push that forward in, in order to make sure that, that we address that appropriately. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the chief was kind enough to uh, give me a copy of your proposal that you gave to the city, and I've had a chance to review it the last couple of days. And in phase two, uh, the couple things I wanted to just, a couple questions I wanted to ask you. On the review of the financial viability of the ambulance services, I would imagine you're going to be taking a look at the way we do the accounting in the ambulance, in the ambulance service right now. And Come and either tell us that we're, we're doing it the way you recommend us to do it or there's other ways we can do our accounting that would maybe better give us an idea of what the total costs are of the ambulance service. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we start with what your actual costs are to provide the service. That's where we start. Uh, and, and I don't pretend to understand your system yet. So we'll first have to dissect, you know, if they're, if they're cross-trained, how to partition out the, the real costs between the fire program, the EMS program, et cetera. But once we, once we settle that, and we'll work with the department and the city, you know, budget folks to, to get to that, then we'll actually look at the service level, the workload, how the calls are distributed. So it all starts from the community's demand for services. And then we'll back all the way up to the back office and look at, your billing rate structure, how that competes, what your, what your payer mix is in the community, and really look at the rest of it all the way back to the actual accounting process. Good. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing is the organizational analysis, staffing, management fun functions, and effectiveness. Uh, do you generally do a time study of the management people in the department? Uh, I, again, you know, take a look at what their day consists of, uh, should they be doing more of this, less of this? And as part of that, do you look over uh, the possible cons consolidation of duties? For example, can captains do more and the battalion chiefs can do less and spend their time in more productive areas? Is, is that the type of thing that you do? Yes, but I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a time allocation study. 
uh, you know, we're only here for a small snapshot. That would be extremely <laughs> easy to bias that equation, uh, you know, just for a small. The way we overcome that is we do structured interviews, and then we look at the balance of the duties and the job descriptions, and then, and then we walk through that. Generally, we found that the, that the fire department administrations are more than happy to share their challenges with you, and then we'll, we'll sort through that from our experience to try to make sure that we, we find the right mix by both function and operation. Many times we find, much like the 80-20 rule, that there's a lot of effort spent outside of job descriptions in order to make it, make it all come together. So we make sure that we account for all those different elements. And when you're talking about evaluation of training and qualifications, are you looking kind of at uh, you know, the position of, of a chief or a battalion chief or captain, and do you compare our requirements both with experience and education to other departments you worked with? And are, are we doing good in that area or are we deficient uh, in that area compared to other departments? Do you do that kind of an analysis? Our analysis really starts with the effectiveness. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm for a academic attainment, <laughs> but if there isn't a deficiency in the impact or the outcome of the department, then yes, we can make some broad recommendations, but really we start at the effectiveness and the outcomes and how efficient the organization is and how it's working. That's our first platform because in our experience, personality always and, and individual capability always supersedes the degrees. So we make sure that we account for all that. As far as community comparisons, we'll give you some, some broad frameworks from our experience going around the country of what's there. But at the end of that, the reality is when it comes to the administrative capacity and the organization, there's many ways to structure the organization to be effective. So part of our process is to really evaluate what are the individual capacities, because those individuals can, can shape your organizational design based on their capabilities, where uh, in one organization may very, work very well here, but in, in another organization you may need more help in one division than another because of the, person, of the individuals in the positions. Thanks. Any other questions? I've got, I've got one. What is, uh, do you look at the total impact of our department versus um, our surrounding area? you know, the town of Wilson, the town of Sheboygan, and, and, and how they interact with one another is, is, you know, to where we know what our total impact is for our surrounding area and that they would understand what a great job we're doing. Or, uh, is that come into your, uh, your study? Here's the answer. If you'd like us to do a comparison with like communities in the area, we can put together a, a small assessment for that. Uh, and we can work with the city and the department to determine which variables you, you wanted to compare on. But we don't encourage communities to do that because the expectations for service can change from community to community. So if one community has a different level of uh, capability or commitment to public safety, then their per capita costs and all, all the other items will trickle down. So you just have to, you have to hate to say it, but you have to take it with a grain of salt, but it is valuable for the political process. So we're more than happy to do that. But that's not, that's not an integral part of our process because we, we want to tailor it specifically to your unique community. Yes, sir. Yeah, just to follow up on what you were asking, Alderman Heidemann, uh, do you do, uh, I, I may have read it in here somewhere, but do you do a kind of a study of what we're doing now with our mutual aid with our other smaller departments, not our full-time departments, what, what we're doing now, where there may be some opportunities, that type of thing? Yes, sir, that was actually in, in phase two that was identified. So uh, our approach is, there's really, uh, I, we'll call it three tiers. Anytime you're gonna look at a shared service, you really have to make sure that there's a, a, a similar risk value there's a similar funding value, and uh, you have to have some kind of uh, commonality and governance. So those are the three main components we look at. So what we plan to do for you in your first study is really to just answer the operational piece. Let's start there and say, is there an operational advantage to enhance shared services? 
And if the answer is yes, then we'll talk to you about how you want to address that moving forward. If the answer is no, then you may not want to continue to, con to consider that. But that's the first main piece, because 90% of your costs, as you know, are in labor. So let's answer the operational component first, and then we can discuss uh, some other options. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> a couple more questions. The studies that you've done for many, many or groups and, and communities, how many of them have actually come to you not knowing what they were going to do with the information, just had a study to kind of collect data? I mean, do they typically have an idea, like you said before, gap analysis and definition of where they want to go as far as more safety, less, less safety, more competitive? Um, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? You think of how best to address that. Um, let's just say that there is considerable variability in each community's understanding and technical expertise. So some communities may feel very, very strongly that they have all their I's dotted and their T's crossed, and then we come in and we assist, and then some light bulbs go off, and maybe some different lenses uh, occur where they can look at how they operate. Uh, I don't know that to be true one way or the other in, in your agency, uh, but certainly we haven't had any clients that weren't very uh, pleased with the work product and we didn't add value before we left. So um, I think to have that level of discourse, uh, even if it validates some internal assumptions, is still very valuable. Thank you. Any other questions? So I had some other things beeping here, and I thought, what? Alderman Bellinger. Uh, if there's no more questions, I'm not sure if there's going to be any additional, but I just wanted to personally thank you for making the time during the holiday season to make it to uh, our beautiful city. Hopefully Absolutely. you had some time today to drive around a little bit and, and see what kind of a community we are. It is much nicer in the summer than it is right now <laughs> with the, the snow banks. So, so thank you. Safe travels, and have a Merry Christmas, and I appreciate your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, then, then before us, then, is this discussion and possible recommendations of the Common Council. Okay, what I'd, what I'd like to do is, again, I would like to take a vote as to whether or not uh, we're going to bring this item, 3-1, uh, back to the Common Council. I'm sorry, Chief? Um, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to go on record that I'm in opposition to this for two reasons. Number one, I already have a plan. I came up with a plan. I was asked to come up with a plan. I came up with a plan. Um, it's a three-year plan, but it's very aggressive, and it accomplishes quite a few things in that three-year time span. And after that, in, on January 1st of 2020, we'll be set up for the future for this department with uh, increase in population, with increase in building construction, and our staffing level safety, um, and all of those things that will be addressed. Number two, and I didn't even think of this when I, um, until about a week or two ago, but the plan starts with the 17 budget. And that budget's in. The capital's been approved, my operational budget's been approved, and it includes one person. And it's just human nature that if this is going on, and I don't know when it's going to start, and I don't know how long it's going to take, six months, eight months, ten months. We've been told six months, and that's, that's great. But we don't have time to wait. We need to act now. And I need to move forward with the things that we need to do, and that starts with hiring that battalion chief next, you know, in uh, July 1st of next year. So the natural tendency would be, if we got this study going on, why should we even do that? And we don't have time to wait. And that three-year program that I have, that I believe will guarantee success, starts next year. So that, those are the reasons that I'm opposed to it. That's all I wanted to say, unless there's any questions for me. Alderman Valenger? I don't have any questions, but I'd like to speak. Okay, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I originally brought this study uh, about six years ago. I, I had a similar proposal. 
I met with Chief Herman at the time. I made him aware of what my intentions were. He was not in favor of it. Um, I, the, uh, the council at the time uh, was not in favor of it, and it, and it didn't go anywhere. I brought it up again, um, and I met with the chief, and I met with Chase and Cal, and uh, I've had s several subsequent conversations with them since this has progressed. Uh, the chief originally was in favor of it. He told me, uh, you know, I'm in, anything I can do to get more information, you know, why wouldn't I want more information? I think we're doing a great job. It's just going to verify that. I want more information. Go ahead and do it. You know, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Uh, at the public protection and safety meeting uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked him again if he still supported it, and he was very wishy-washy, said six of one, half a dozen of the other. I don't really care. I'm, you know, I could go either way. Uh, subsequently, last Friday, I believe, I got a voicemail from the chief saying, I'm dead set against it because I had a conversation with uh, Chairman Heideman, and he said that uh, it's going to take 12 months to do the study. I'm not in favor of that. Uh, I want to get my, my three men back. I want to get the roofs repaired, and I want my fire truck. And that's not going to happen if the study starts. I said, I replied to him via email and said, Alderman he and I copied Alderman Heideman on it. I said, Alderman Heideman does not have the unilateral authority to you know, stop the budget process and stop the funding of those things. The budget was already approved. You're getting all that, and uh, nothing has changed in your assertion that the study was going to take 12 months was incorrect also. At the public protection and safety meeting, I stated that I had talked to uh, Steve, and uh, I asked him if we could run it concurrently phase one and phase two and get it done in six months. He affirmed that and he affirmed that again tonight. So that was incorrect too. So, you know, what I think is, is that as it's coming closer to a vote, you're thinking that this, you know, it, it may have some success, it may pass, it may not, I don't know, we'll find out. But uh, you, now you have some opposition against it. And I greatly resent that. I've been straightforward with you, with the union, with everybody else. I've got no bias, I've got no horse in the game. Um, on, on this whole issue, and it just, it really, really bothers me. Um, there's also been some insinuation uh, from some other people that I have a relationship or professional or personal or financial uh, with this organization, and um, I can assure you 100% I do not. I've contacted each one of the six um, individual uh, organizations that submitted a proposal prior to me doing the study to get background information on what their capabilities were and finding out what would be a good fit, a scope of work that would be needed in that type of thing. And uh, I I've subsequently made a phone call to Steve. I've spoken to him twice in my whole life, never knew of him before, never knew of his company before. And so, you know, I, I take uh, offense at that, that, that I've got something personally to gain from this whole thing. I don't. What I want is for the best uh, fire protection for the city at the most economical cost. I want a long-term plan, and it's taken you 20 months to come up with something. We've been asking and asking and asking, so that's why I brought this forward. So, you know, and um, also a lot of what the council votes on is very mundane issues. Uh, this past week, we've got something referred that we'll be voting on. Um, in a couple weeks, it's going to be on May 13th, the International Migratory Bird Day. How is that going to affect the residents? It's not going to have a great deal of effect on the residents. Um, we do occasionally vote on things that are extremely important, the budget, um, capital borrowing, uh, any type of fees, garbage fee, um, uh, city hall, things like that. I would rank this as one of those important votes that's going to impact the, the residents of the city. Uh, we do studies all the time, and uh, we've got, um, we did an A Street, a study for the A Street plan, um, and you can argue that the, we've got a director of planning, we've got a city administrator, we pay them a lot of money, they should be the experts, why do we need to have a plan for that? Uh, we're going to do a planned parking study, we've got a director for transit, and we've got a city engineer, why do we need to do a parking study? You know, we're, you know where that's in the plan. Last week, at the council meeting, we just approved a professional engineering services agreement for the high strength waste receiving and co-digestion evaluation for uh, the water treatment plant. You know, why are we doing that? We've got Sharon, who's in charge of the water treatment plant, and David Beeble. 
you know, why, why are we doing that? Why are we spending $27,000 on that? In, in all of those instances, nobody questioned the cost of what those studies were gonna be. And what I would argue is that the individuals, the head of the departments, aren't necessarily the industry experts and can provide us the detail and the depth that we need to run the city in the most efficient manner possible. So that's why we need to have this study. And also, the study is, is about $59,000. I did a quick calculation, $59,000. Well, on the face of that, that's a lot of money. I, and I'm not cavalier about that, that is a lot of money. And I do certainly respect the taxpayer's dollars and, and I'm very responsible with how we spend it. But that is less than 1% of your $8 million budget. It's less than three quarters of a percent. It's about 0.73% of the budget. So in the big scheme of things, the wealth of information and the knowledge that we're gonna get, the depth, the, uh, the broadness of the plan, and the long-term uh, focus of it, I think is gonna be invaluable for the city moving forward. And I think it's vital that we move forward and we vote in a positive manner to fund this study. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, Chair. I, uh, I would uh, move uh, that uh, the city uh, enters into a contract for professional services with uh, Fitch and Associates uh, to do the um, operations and developmental structure study that is outlined in the materials. Second. Okay. Um, Could I speak a, to that? Yes, please. Um, thank you. Um, so I've given this a lot of thought um, as well. Um, I think that we have some financially very large decisions to make here. If for no other reason, if we maintain five fire stations, we're going to have to put uh, over $2 million into the repair of those stations uh, to make sure that they continue to be functioning. And we may choose to do that. I mean, that may be a, a, a good idea and a, and a way of moving forward. Um, uh, on the other hand, there may be a different way of looking at it. Um, what we have before us now is uh, a very good study by the firefighters union, and I do appreciate that. And I, uh, I particularly like the maps. You know, I like the color maps, and I learned a lot from from all of that. Um, it puts full faith and necessity on uh, maintenance of the standards of the national, the NFPA, the National Fire Protection Associate, whatever it is. That's it. Um, you know, 1710, you know, which gives us the number of uh, firefighters that we need to have um, uh, on each vehicle answering calls and so forth. Um, one of my questions is, is that, is that the best? Is that the only? Is that the required? Is that the... Um, volitional standard or is that something that that we can consider in the mix one of the things if we have four fire stations we meet those we meet the 1710 standards and maybe we want to do that rather than invest two million dollars in repairing a very old building and then another building that's that's not quite so old um, just given the amount of money that is involved just in the repairs alone I think this study is justified um, I also think it's going to give us deeper and um, more meaningful information that helps guide us. At, and um, the gentleman kept speaking about, which was, it was just interesting to me, and I hadn't thought about it, which is what is the community standard? Um, are we in a position where we want to guarantee safety? Are we in a position where we want to be in the best in the best position to respond quickly, but we can't guarantee things. What, you know, what, what is our philosophy? And I think um, through, it sounded like some qualitative structured interviews and so forth, we might get that information. And I think that is going to be an important piece of the decision as well. Um, I appreciate the, the chief's plan. As far as I can tell, it pretty much tracks the union's plan, except it has a huge budget busting proposal for 2018. It takes us out of expenditure restraints. If we fund the chief's proposal um, for, so we will have six additional firefighters and, and two battalion chiefs, um, something else has got to give. Are we going to lose, I mean, how many police officers do we want to lose? Um, or do we want to shut down, you know, a couple of our parks? Or what do we want to do in order to meet this really significant budget increase 
that may be the chief's plan for moving forward, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be this council's plan because we can't afford it. I mean, we just can't. If we violate expenditure restraints, we lose 700 grand from the state, and then, and then I think we're in a world of hurt. So $59,000 is a lot of dough. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that, you know, it's the old expression, penny wise and pound foolish. We shouldn't do that. This is, I was impressed with the gentleman's presentation. Um, it was measured, it was pretty smart, as far as I can tell. Um, and it may meet pretty much what the chief and the, and the firefighters want to do. Then we can all feel, hey, that's okay, that's good. We've, we've made a good decision here. It's like deciding to have brain surgery and going to your wonderfully talented general practitioner and he says, I think this is what we ought to do. Most of us would want, if we were going to have brain surgery, someone who was really smart about brains to look at what it was that we were looking at, what we needed to do and get that kind of specialist. So this is specialist help in my view. It is a little more expensive, but ultimately, Oh boy, I really think we're gonna save a whole lot more than $59,000, have a better fire department, and we can all rest easier. Thank you, Alderman Thiel. Thank you. Um, I'm not in favor of spending the money for these studies. In fact, John brought up a lot of other studies that we've talked about, that we need these, all these other studies, and I really thought about this a lot. And I think we do need to put more emphasis on our, on our department heads for some of these studies. Some of the studies that I've seen come across for like these parking studies in here, I could have went home and drew a map and showed you, hey, we need to put a, a spot here, spot here, spot here. I think we're releasing a lot of money on a lot of these studies that we do, and I'm definitely gonna start taking a closer look at it. We had the union do a nice study for us, and I thought they did a very nice job. The chief sat down and, put in, and did a nice job. I think we gotta go off of these recommendations. They're working together for, I think, for the first time in a while. They're sitting down, they're talking, we're doing teamwork. I think that's something what we wanted. We wanted everybody to work together. And that's what I really like seeing what's happening here. And I commend both of you guys for everybody doing that. Um, we talked about dollars. They could come back with a study, have the same thing we got, and we're still in that same constraint that we can't do it. So what's the difference if he comes through and says, hey, we need to do this compared to the chief's proposal? We still don't have the financial to do it. Um, <coughs> I just think wasting another $60,000 on, on taxpayer money just doesn't make sense to me. And, and, I'm, and not just with this study, but with studies going forward. I think we need to take a lot closer look that I think we're wasting a lot of dollars on doing a lot of this. Thank you. Alderman Lundowski. I just want to say that I'm also against this study right now. And since we have the fire department and the firefighters union talking and meeting, I would like to see them come up with a long range plan, say within the next three months. And if they can't come up with a plan that we can agree on, then we can still go forward and hire for this study and still have it done in time for the next year's budget. Thank you. Alderman Bitters. Thank you, Chair. I, I walked into this with a fair amount of skepticism. I, I, I listened to the presentation. I didn't hear a great deal beyond the information we already have, you know, between, between what city staff has provided, what the unions provided. I, I heard a fair amount of resume, you know, it, it, rattling off, here's it, what we're going to do. What I didn't hear was, I, I heard we'll get, com uh, comparables with cities around the country, but not necessarily within the state. And the state is the laws that we work by. Uh, in terms of the interviews, while well, we're getting the feedback from the staff and the union membership who seem to agree uh, on what, what our next steps should be. I, I didn't see a great deal of, okay, there's a, uh, there could be a long-term plan that comes out of this study. Oh, great. Uh, 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 what is that, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan? Uh, plans are just that. Uh, 
no plan that lasts more than two years, it, it, the variables all change. So I, I have a little, I have a little issue with, yeah, we'll have them look at this and here's, here's where I want you to be in 2025. And I, and my gut instinct is none of that will be valid at that time. So I, I, I don't want to put too much stock into the, oh, here's what we're going to do so far down the road because uh, it, we've already proven that we can deviate off those courses. As that Alderman Thiel said, with any number of studies, you know, it's the studies are, uh, the recommendations are a suggestion. We may never get there. Because of the budget constraints and the uh, you know the changing demographics and changing neighborhoods, so I, I, I I'm still mighty skeptical about spending the money on this particular uh, endeavor. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Sure. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Chair. I, I guess I just want to point out a few additional things. I think we've all understand what some of the issues and opportunities are that we're, we're facing. And I think, I believe in studies, I believe in additional information, but first and foremost, the hardest part that I see that the city has is defining what are we going to do with the information that we have. We have already a great report from the union um, using the NFPA, uh, if I said it correctly. Yes. Um, also, we have the 2020, we already know that we're putting certain, um, we're filling certain resources and spending some money going into the 2017 uh, year. Um, that's already been um, basically put aside for that. The concern that I have is spending the money, having a report, um, finding out that what the, I, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to find out what the gap analysis is but again, we only have so many dollars to spend. Um, and the, the concern that I have is we spend a ton of money. I, I say a ton of money, $60,000 is a, a lot of money in my world. Um, and we find out that um, we're doing okay with how much money we're spending with the amount of uh, population that we have. We're not, we're, we're not looking at reducing stations. We're not looking at adding stations. We're not looking at how we're crewing per se. Uh, we may come up with a gap analysis to say, you guys are doing really well with what you've got, which I think our, our fire department's doing a great job. Um, I'm just very concerned about spending the money and not having a defined plan of what we're going to do with the information that we get. Thank you. Any other, any other questions or comments? We've had a motion. Mr. Chair, can I address a couple things that Alderman? You, you, you made your point about what was on the agenda. There's some misinformation there. I'd like to clarify it. Uh, Alderman Bellinger. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Chief. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I would just like to say I don't know what people are afraid of with coming with a study. And, you know, we, we, I demonstrated earlier that we've, we pay for studies all the time. Our department heads and our, our, our leadership aren't necessarily industry experts on every latest and greatest thing that's, that's out there. And that's why we fund studies. And uh, information is vital. What are we going to do with the information? I hope we're going to take it, you know, constructively and we're going to follow whatever, whatever it is and, and try to implement it the best we can with the financial constraints that we're under. So I don't know what the study is going to say. I don't know if it's going to say we need to spend a lot more, we need to spend less, we need more stations, we need less stations, we need to relocate them, we need a uh, different management structure, uh, we need to get out of the ambulance service, we need to beef up our accounting with the ambulance. I don't know what it's going to say, but I'm going to take the information because these are experts in their field and I'm certainly going to make sure that uh, and do my part as an alderman and an elected official that we take the information and we have a roadmap and a plan to follow it to implement things that are suggested and that we achieve the greatest 
uh, fire protection in the city that we can in the most economical manner that we can given the constraints that we're under. So I don't know what everybody's afraid of this, all this information for. Information is, we all want as much information as we can. This is an $8 million department annually that we're funding and everybody's just thinking, well, you know what, we've waited 20 months for this 2020 study to, or this 2020 plan to come out. You know what, it's gospel, it's good, let's just go with it. You know, even though that, you know, Alderman Donahue stated that it's a budget buster in 2018 and uh, there would be significant ramifications that we'd have to look at, you know, moving forward, whether it's, you know, getting rid of police or admin here in the in City Hall or you know, public works or, or outsourcing different things, whatever it's going to be. You know, let's get the information, let's see what it is, and then we can move forward. You can't very well have a plan on what you're going to do with the information until you see what it is. You don't know what it is, so how can you plan for it? So all I'm asking for is spending three quarters of a percent of the fire budget to come up with a long-term plan and look for and, and see what we can come up with and move forward. Thank you. Okay, there's been a, uh, Alderman Bourne. Thanks, thank you. I'm thank sorry. you, Chairman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna support the study because I, I think it's, it's drastically needed. And just going over the stuff that I reviewed here in this phase two, first of all, the review of the financial via, viability of the ambulance services. We've been in this for eight years. We certainly haven't had an internal financial viability of the ambulance services. The next one is the evaluation of training and qualifications of the department. The next big one that's huge, absolutely huge for me, is an organizational analysis, staffing, management functions, and effectiveness. That I think can really be done uh, by a third party. And apparently this firm and the five or six other firms that sent us by uh, proposals are doing these analysis for, for, for city governments all over the, all over the country. Uh, the next one is strategies for cost containment and additional funding. I didn't see anything, I didn't see really anything in the union's proposal or the chief's proposal about any cost containment or better, way, uh, better ways of doing things, uh, any innovation. The, other, the, the last one here is enhanced collaboration of shared services and contracted services. No mention of that. And as Alderman Donahue said, this is a budget buster for 2018. We're going to need, hopefully, you're going to have to have some enhanced collaboration, and we need some cost, consta cost containment strategies. And we're not getting this in-house. And, and, and I think by going to an outside organization that's going to look at this unbiased, no politics involved, I think we're going to get some answers to these very important questions, and that's why I'm supporting the study. Alderman okay. Thiel. A uh, couple things. One of my main concerns here is we have two fire stations running with two people, if I'm correct. Correct? Yes. And l let me paint a picture here. Let's say one of these apartment buildings on the south side, I think it's called Amanda Lane. I think they're in the city, correct? Let's say they have a little kitchen fire and you go over there. You guys cannot go in there until a third person arrives, correct? Is that? Well, until the next, until the next arriving unit. Would, would be until the next arriving unit. So we're looking at at times there. Just picture that. Six to eight minutes. Six to eight minutes, correct. And you're like right there. Yeah, you're pretty close. <laughs> you're right down the road. This could be a small kitchen fire, and in a matter of minutes, because we're waiting another three minutes, because you're at least three minutes away from there, another three minutes away, that kitchen fire could end up being a whole apartment complex going down. That is my concern here. We need to get bodies in here studies or whatever, I'm concerned about the south side and the far north side of Sheboygan for their safety. We have a whole industrial park out there. We have two people manning that south side. I know some of you live on the far south side. You have a small fire in your house. I don't know, I'm concerned about that also. I'm concerned about the safety of just having two people on the far north and south side in the city of Sheboygan. And any study is gonna tell you that, whether it's his study, the union study, any study, the chief study, I really have that concern. I'd rather see that $60,000 go to a personnel and, and put safety right away than to wait for, wait for a study. Um, also, if I could, I, I would like to hear what the chief wanted to correct if, if I could open the floor to him. Yeah. Thank you. First, uh, Alderman Warren first. 
Uh, Alderman Thiel, I couldn't agree with you more on response times. Response times is a minuscule part of this study. The things that I just went over are very, very important besides response times. And I totally agree with you. We have to get as many people on scene as we can. One of the, one of the ways we could do that is to get the battalion chiefs out of the stations and, and go to more calls. There was a study done by that. There was a study done by that uh, on that last year by somebody who just retired, and that was one of the big things. And that was one of the things that Chase mentioned in his report. We got to have three people there. Okay, then get the battalion chief off of his duff at the station, ordering paper towels for the station, and get out on the calls. So they've got three people there, and the second unit gets there. They got five. That's your problem solved right there. The battalion chiefs got to get out of the stations and go on calls more regularly. Than they are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I want to address to, to, to for Alderman uh, Thiel, uh, the budget was passed. There's three fighter fires that are going to be coming on uh, under the department. So then those numbers are going to change as far as the way those are staffed, both at the south side station will have three, or the just the north side. Just the north side. Just the north side. Okay. okay. But there, but the staffing has been improved by this last budget, and we've got three firefighters that quite honestly could have been brought in in 2015 and, and weren't brought in. But again, um, th we did address an issue as far as manning some of the stations. So that's already, we, we've got to let that come in through first through this last budget. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. It's Chief, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Okay. Um, Alderman, you're operating under a misconception. And I think that's, I, I've been hearing this rumor for a while now. The first person that ever asked me to come up with my plan was City Administrator Hoffland. He's the first one asked me to come up with my plan. In the past, I was told you will cut four people and you will go from five to four fire stations. And I want you to justify that. That's what happened in the past. He's the first one that asked me what my opinion was. And I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I have an associate degree, three bachelors, a master's. I was one of four people in the world selected for the Harvard Fellowship. I have my EFO. I've been in the fire service for 34 years. You know, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, and I know what this city needs. And what you said is exactly what we want. It's no different. I want the best department we can provide with the best services, highest level, best training at an economical or a, a, to be cost efficient. We both want the same thing. So I just wanted to make that clear. I just wanted you to understand that. And when we spoke the first time, my plan wasn't finished yet when we met. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. I'm going to say, um, okay, never mind then. Okay, so we have, we've got a motion and a second in front of us. Uh, call Mary, a question. Let's call a question, yes. Um, we lost it all the person. We don't have a quorum anymore. No, we still have, yeah, didn't. Oh. He had to take her. Oh, don't. No, yeah, we, we, no, we picked up one. Yeah, we did. We made a trick. Sorry. Okay, so. Um, That's right, you came in after. I didn't have to use my power. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> Lewandowski <laughs> rolled out. <laughs> Oh, he <laughs> okay. okay, there's been a motion second. Please, Mary, take a roll. Okay, Bellinger? Aye. Bitters? Nay. Oren? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Herman? Aye. Rob? Nay. Thiel? Nay. Wolf? Aye. Six ayes and three noes. All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, nothing else is on the agenda. Move to uh, adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you very much. All in favor say aye. 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 And a Merry Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs>